Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to present the Green Maritime Distillation for Decarbonization in this uh, conference. Since this is the first session of this conference, I would like to briefly summarize IAM's plan for decarbonization and then discuss desalination for decarbonization. I take off my mask. Uh, first, I will uh, uh, briefly introduce the IMO GH reduction plan. Next, we'll look at the alternative fuels and desalination for decarbonization. Maybe uh, you are already familiar with the IMO's greenhouse gas GHG reduction plan. However, once again, uh, let's take a brief look at the IMO activities and plans for GHG reduction to start the discussion in this conference. MEPC committee of IMO adopted the resolution initial IMO strategy on reduction of GHG emissions from ships in 20, uh, 2018. To achieve the goals set in the initial strategy, short, mid, and long-term measures were discussed and various reviews were conducted. It is expected that the MEPC committee will adopt a revised strategy with more stringent goals in the coming year. Uh, with uh, 2008's uh, baseline year, IMO strategy aims to reduce at least 50% of total GHG emissions from shipping by 2050. At the same time, it aims to reduce uh, the average carbon intensity by at least 40% by 2030 and 70% before mid-century. The short-term measures aims to reduce the carbon intensity of ships. IMO requires ships to calculate their energy efficiency existing ship index, EEXI, and establish their annual operational carbon intensity indicator, CII. CII determines the annual reduction factor required to improve the ship's operational carbon intensity. The actual operational CII must be documented and verified against the required annual operational CII. The CII value determines the operational carbon intensity rating of the vessel. From 2023, next year, existing ships will be subjected to CII regulations. Uh, as mid and long-term measures, GHG levy emissions trading system and the GHG fuel standards are being considered. In actual application, it is expected that several of the, these means will be combined. Now, let's briefly summarize the most powerful means to reduce greenhouse gas, alternative fuels. The, there are many technical and operational measures to reduce GHG, but up to 100 GHG reduction can only be achieved with alternative fuels. In the short term, equipment that improves energy efficiency can be used. However, low carbon fuels such as LNG biofuel and carbon free fuels such as ammonia and hydrogen are essential to satisfy the IMO's GHG reduction goals. There are many types of eco-friendly alternative fuels, such as LNG, ammonia, and hydrogen. They were analyzed and summarized in this table. Now, fuel for vessels must be eco-friendly, but there are some problems with the fuel supply chain, space utilization, cost, etc. For example, ammonia and hydrogen have very low energy densities in terms of volume. That means that the system size required to store the same energy increases. Uh, due to time constraint, uh, I will skip these slides. So now I will summarize the possible digitalization for decarbonization. Especially, I would like to introduce the current status of standard related to maritime digitalization and the research project in Korea based on those standards. 
Many people engaged in marine transportation plans to reduce carbon emission to zero by using carbon-free fuels. However, there is difficulty in that it has to wait a very long time until the carbon-free propulsion system is commercialized. It is when stepping stone technology is needed to cross the valley between current fuels and the future carbon-free fuel. One such stepping stone is uh, the installation of separate facilities on ships, such as equipment that captures and stores carbon emissions. However, not all ships will be able to do so, and you can think of other ways to reduce their speed and keep adjusting their navigation plan while calculating their carbon footprint. Fortunate, fortunately, the recent digitalization of the maritime sector could help this approach. Let's keep this right. Uh, I think the essence of digital transformation in ships in maritime autonomous surface ships. The Korean government also started the Korean Autonomous Surface Ship Project in 2020. This picture on the screen shows the logical configuration of the uh, mass system being developed by the Korean project. If you look at the figure, it can be seen that there are various subsystems such as IoT sensors for situation awareness, engine control, damage control, etc. They are integrated according to ISO 19847 and 8 standards. The traditional standard for data exchange between marine navigation equipment is the CS1263 series of IEC. These standards range from the conventional NMA 0183 to the recent network security. The standards established by ISO for onboard data sharing of smart ships are 19847 uh, and 19848. These are uh, standards based on MQTT, MSQ telemetry, trans, uh, transport telemetry, or uh, representative protocol in the IoT field. Although various uh, standards can be applied to share data on board, the Korean project is developing the mass system based on ISO and IEC standards. I will introduce the standards on the put side, another pillar for the digitalization of the maritime sector. Uh, looking at the standard for port digitalization, the guidelines for single window implementation of the IMO facilitation committee stand out the most, especially the, the, the FAL Convention 2024 includes mandatory single window. If you look at the single window guideline, the request for using IMO compendium is mentioned in several places. The compendium is the reference data model IMO created by FAL committee. The revised guidelines include the consideration of a protocol optimization too. The FAL committee is also developing guidelines on harmonized communication and electronic exchange of operational data, operational data for protocols. The protocol guidelines uh, refer to, I, uh, again, ISO 198478 and IRS S211 for data format standard. In particular, IALA S211 is a standard developed according to IHO S100 framework for protocols information exchange. So I think there is a possibility of future use. In addition to the standards in this slide, there are various standards such as ISO 28005. Anyway, I think uh, the, there is a possibility of future use of uh, IHO S IALA S211. The a maritime single window system that rely, uh, relies mainly on EDI already exists in Korea. The system is called Put MIS. However, to uh, reflect the various standardization activities of the FAA committees and to link the 
various information systems of ships and ports, a new project called AI Port Chain has been launched this year. This project aims to develop an information chain between ships, the ports, and the hinterland to improve logistics efficiency and protect the port's environment. The, this picture on the slide shows information systems currently in operation or under development in Korean waters. Smart navigation of Korean navigation system, Korean autonomous surface ships, port MIS, and other port automation system I presented. Port community system, uh, a platform for data exchange within a port, does not yet exist. However, the, through the AI port chain project, we plan to develop a prototype that can test the role of the data sharing information, including ship information system, while reflating the standard of IMO, IRA, and so on. It can be expected that uh, this desalination project and the international standards will increase the operational efficiency of ships and ports and will lead to reduction in greenhouse gas. Okay, now let's summarize what has been introduced so far. The desalination of ships and the ports described in the previous slide can be seen as part of the effort to implement the just-in-time operational, uh, just-in-time operation described in Just-in-Time Arrival Guide released by GLOMIP and IMO in 2020. If a port and a ship can perform necessary tasks without losing their own time, and if necessary information can be exchanged immediately in this process, the ship can plan a route that minimizes energy use. It will also be possible to operate the engine to minimize energy consumption when navigating this route. What is needed in this process is to have an information sharing system to optimize the entire process of navigation and port calls. Various standardization works for the installation of ships and ports are in progress. For these standards to be truly effective in reducing GHG emissions, I think they must be harmonized so that information on ships and ports can flow uninterrupted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.